Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you as soon as I already know na me, you to come here. This very moment, I don't want to talk too much. I just want to make you watch this video. How the former governor of Edo State, Adams, Comrade Adams Oshumule, they expose the location of people where they sabotage Dangote Refinery. People where they behind the downfall of Dangote Refinery. Refinery that worth billions of dollars. Now, some people, they sabotage. So, now here, Adam Sushomole from Expose Them. Watch this video and enjoy it. The Chinese also go to the World Bank. They also go to the IMF meeting. They listen. When they finish, they say thank you. They go back to um, Beijing and do what they call capitalism with Chinese characteristics. The interest rate is not market driven. The rate you change your money in hotel is the same rate you change it in the bank. I know it because I've been there. That is not market forces. That is state regulation. And when the state functionally abuse power, they execute. They kill. And so, without following Western models, China has become, over a period of 50 to 20 years, they had double-digit growth consistently not based on market liberal models. When Washington insists that the Chinese currency is overvalued, the Chinese reply, it is not the foreigner who will tell us the value of our currency. <laughs> In Nigeria, our people will go to the World Bank and I, they will tell us what they think we are. And we celebrate that fifth rate, uh, what they call them now, they are this funny, funny, not funny names, well known names in West, that they have given us B plus, B minus, B plus, plus, plus. What the hell does it matter? We are to raise who we are, not foreigners. And until we return back to this homegrown policy, and damn because it's possible with the world, because they are going to fight us. I do not think that romancing with them is going to deliver us. No, it will not. And they will turn around to accuse us of corruption. And yet every cobalt stealing are kept abroad is in their banks. But they are not corrupt. Now, let me conclude. What is going on even now? That is why when you say we should pray for the president, you were right. I'm not a fanatic when it comes to... Because I don't believe that just being godly is enough to bail us out. I said something somewhere that those who say, praise the Lord, that your business will prosper. It's not correct. The Lord is already a generous Lord. He gives us the brain to think, the hand to walk, and the capacity to move. What we need is to deploy all of this. However, why the president needs prayers? The kind of difficult decisions he has to take will require that we all pray for him because even both the Bible and the Holy Quran recognize principalities. So we we'll use our prayer to cast away those so that the president will have the courage, the protection to do what he has to do. For example, just yesterday this on the floor of the Senate, we had to debate and pass a resolution. Many of you would have been particip participated or heard about the debate about uh, PIB. Petroleum industry be now Petroleum Industry Act. And that has been passed. This NMPC has been broken to different compartments, uh, private companies, even though there are no private shareholders. And the management do not have the culture of professional managers, as you find elsewhere. And so, with all the fun there in celebrating Dagote Refinery, for example, that for once we now have a Nigerian who has initiated and built one of the world's biggest refinery, Nigeria crude oil, is being exported. They denied to allocate it to Dangote, and they are exporting it to Europe. And then Dangote is importing crude from America into Nigeria. Those guys deserve, deserve to be hanged. If we don't hang them, they will hang all of us. Yeah, they will hang all of us. And what it takes to hang them will require a president with extraordinary courage. Now, if you know anything about science, you will know I'm not so privileged. The diesel they are importing, they are importing diesel. 
even at a time when the CBN is saying there is too much pressure on our imports. We were we celebrated President Buhari celebrated President Tinubu celebrated one of his achievements because it was his dream to create a, a free trade zone in that part of Lagos, which Dagote now took advantage of to locate his factory. What he saw as a governor between 1999 and 2007 is what gave birth. It is the product of his womb that Dagote uh, refinery now located in Lagos and has the capacity to satisfy the Nigerian market. And yet, some Nigerians, some Nigerians who joined us in lamenting, they are importing low quality diesel that has been prohibited in Europe, that we pollute our environment, destroy our engines, and use our, far, uh, our scarce foreign exchange to pay for it, when a diamond refinery in Lagos is in a position and is producing diesel. And they even announced reduction of the price. But these Nigerians who put themselves first before the country are not interested. They are living here in Abuja. They are unknown to buy it. They are not scrutinized by the Nigerian electorate. Their name doesn't appear in any newspaper. You will abuse the president. Yet, the president has no knowledge about what is going on because you'll be given your responsibility. And when you ask and say, look at the PID Act. That's why yesterday we said, even that act, we will revisit it. Review it. You can't have a sovereign company under a sovereign nation that is not accountable to the people. No. You cannot be bigger than the president. If we can interrogate our president, we can arrest him on television. Who the hell is the other person in Nigeria? Who is an appointee? Who is above the law? So they are importing this thing so that that country refinery will eventually not prosper. And if you look at the numbers, what LMPC has spent between when President President Obasanjo uh, sold out the refineries, for those of you who have some memory, NPC persuaded Yaragua, who took over from Obasanjo, that they can run the refinery. They need 800 million dollars. Between that time and now, they spend over 10 billion dollars. But that call refinery is not working. Every minister has come to set a new date. It's only in Nigeria you have several birthdays for a person. <laughs> and they just say it, and then they attend your laugh. The new minister comes and say, I have done a review. They carry on new tours. They fix a new date. Now we have a refinery built by Nigeria. They want to destroy it. Can you believe that we are exporting that the Niger oil, Nigeria produce oil? The multinationals refuse to sell to Dangote. Are they the owner? No. And we have a government. And the government is helpless so that the so-called uh, PIB, he has to appeal and urge them. You must say, excuse me, we have a lot to do. But we need the balance of some madness and some ruthlessness to get Nigeria back on the road. And that's what we have to do. Otherwise, lamentation, me, I have always said, I wasn't born to lament my life. I was born to confront challenges and to overcome them. If I can speak here to Lisa, it is because my late father told me, Adams, hard work does not kill. Work kills is laziness. Courage is a requirement for a man to navigate through very dangerous forests. And every good thing is in that forest. As you can see, those of you who do Chinese tea, they are from the forest. But when you possess them, they do some nice things in your system. So let me conclude by saying that, for me, they have hope. And this president rightly said, there's a renewed hope. The world is renewed if you have given up. And Amadi says so. When you give up on yourself, who, who is going to bail you out? Now, so when they talk about productivity, I think Amadi, how can we be productive without power? I also believe that going forward, we have to revisit the privatization of the power sector. People who have neither the knowledge, the know-how, nor the competence took over power distribution under the previous, uh, previous government. And the result today is that this is the only market economy where the person who said estimates what he thinks you have consumed and on that basis gives you a bill. 
out of the attraction of private sector is that you either sell and survive or you don't and you perish. Here, no power. While you are in the dark, they give you a submitted bill. That we have to not lament away. As parliament, those are things we must make love to criminalize. If you don't give me meter, you cannot collect. Uh, and I'm sure you know, in many of our communities, when I was campaigning, was, I got to a community where the BDC said they were owing about 19 million, 19.8 million naira. The entire income of the community is not up to that. And so they were disconnected for about two years. Now election is coming and they tell me they are in the dark. <sighs> okay, that is part of the good thing about democracy. Now, these people are in the dark, but they can vote on election day. So I have to appropriate money to pay the bill for them so that they can vote for me. But that is not the logic of privatization. That you will prize electricity out of the reach of the ordinary Nigerian who only need one bulb just to see. He has no air condition, he has no refrigerator. Even worse, as governor of Edo State, I spent taxpayers' money in hundreds of millions to buy transformers. Not to even big men, many of you have had to pay for a transformer. That is the past, part of the cost of distribution. Now, this is made by individual pays the cost, and then this private BDC uh, discos take up the ownership and they give you bill. If you have a house anywhere in Abuja here, you buy your own transformer. And then once you buy it, it becomes the property of the distribution. Which, where else in the world do you pay for basic costs and yet you pay your bill without deducting it from your investment? So there are a lot of things that have to be done. All of this will require courage. The good news, President Bola Ahmed Tidubu has excessive dosage of courage. And I believe he will invest half of that and Nigeria will be on the march again. And like you said, I joined uh, our convener in saying that we haven't come here to lament. We come here to say, if Nigeria worked before, we just need to find out what did we do wrong that brought us on our knees. But remember, for me, basic common sense, if the elephant was was strong enough to dominate the forest and all the trees were shaking when the elephant is coming, less animals were afraid. And somehow he caught some ailment or something and he went on his knees. When you nurture it back to health, it will still dominate its forest. And all of that animals will take a bow. Nigeria will make it and I have confidence. Not my tears, but my courage. Together we we'll bring Nigeria back to a country that no one is oppressed, that people are ready for. Thank you very much.